Today is May 22nd. The Bucks have a blast Friday night. And, and then that's about it. Let's break down the series and talk about the fun one coming. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and at. My name is Josh and I am joined by my brother Jake. What's up, Jake? Hey man, how's it going? You're on the road. I am, I am. I'm up in Ohio. Uh, hanging out in the parents' basement tonight to record. So got to play a lot of ball, see a lot of friends this weekend. It's been great. Wish I could have performed a little better, but it is what it is. <laughs> what shirt you got on here? What are you rocking tonight? Let's oh, go. <laughs> He's got the uh, 70s theme shirt from the Pirate game. Yeah. Uh, I think did, did our parents go? Yeah, they, they took our nephew. There you go. And now you got the shirt. Yep. Love it. Yeah thing's sweet so uh, dropping this series to me because of the way it happened not too pleased yeah for sure i think you steal a game you gotta you gotta you gotta get another one you gotta capitalize yep so we're gonna talk about the series we're gonna talk about the games and and what happened and why we're not happy about it We're also going to take a look at the Texas Rangers coming into town. Take a look at, you know, the normal things that we'll take a look at and then have our normal every week banter Mm -hmm. about all the things and all that stuff. Hey, I have an eventful week coming up. Pretty cool (laughs) on topic. But we have so Indianapolis is coming to Columbus. And so not too far away from us. So we got yeah. tickets for Tuesday night's game. Taking a couple friends down, going down Tuesday night. And then uh, we also got tickets for Saturday night. Taking a couple other friends down to that game. Um, and we have like seats right, I think, first row behind the dugout. So pretty pumped about Going down there. It's a nice it's ballpark awesome. down in Columbus. Yeah. Yeah. And we go down every once in a while just to catch a game, but like we try to make it to at least a couple games when Indianapolis comes in, but I think that's all we're going to make. Well, actually, I know because we also have a jam packed week, but also more specific to the Rangers coming to town. I'm coming in uh, to Pittsburgh on Wednesday for the Rangers Pirates game. Nice. So hopefully we're in a position for a sweep. If not, we're in a position to take the series. But I'm looking forward to that. Me and a yeah. couple of buddies are going, just leaving Monday or Wednesday morning and making a day trip out of it. So I'm pretty pumped. How so long does it take you to get there? Three probably. hours. Like pretty three much hours. on the dot, maybe a little bit less if we don't hit any traffic. But yeah. It's not too bad. No, it's not a bad drive really. And it's... Like, it's not a bad drive, you know what I mean? It's pretty yeah. smooth sailing all the way in. But just going, like, through Steubenville, basically, you know what I mean? We just yeah. come right up 22 and then take it out. But, so yeah, about three hours. I think that's how we'll go. I don't like going the other way. <laughs> I like that drive. Anyway, yeah. um... Was I gonna? I was going somewhere with that too. You threw me off. Sorry. No, it's fine. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Um, what else do we have here on the notes? So I, I'll have a little bit on Friday for what I see in Indy, and then again next week because then we'll, I'll be going to the Saturday game. So I have like yeah. a couple different like minor league updates coming. In our next couple episodes. 
So that'll be fun. Yeah. You want to do the recaps now and then just get moving? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. You don't want them. One of these days, I'm going to make you do them, right? That's fine. That's All right. Fine. I think one I'm going to go days. really fast on this one, so I'm going to try that shorter song. What do you think? Over on? Do you think I'll make it? No. <laughs> <laughs> well let's give it a shot then <laughs> let's see if i can do it all right here we go i got a minute 40 all right friday the offense blew up and oviedo was actually good pirates take game one 13 to three the bucks hit the nl's top pitcher zach gallon for eight runs in three and two-thirds innings and didn't stop there Cutch hayes bay palacios get three hits hayes with two doubles Santana, Bay, Swinski add doubles of their own. Reynolds, a three-run homer. First home run since opening day in Pittsburgh. Pirates, eight for 16 with runners in scoring position. Oviedo gets the win. Six innings, two hits, one run, three walks, seven strikeouts, and a position player pitches, so I'm sure I'll complain about it. If you beat Zach Gallen in game one, you should take the series in the Keller game. Pirates failed to do that. On Saturday, Keller goes six innings, three hits, two runs, no walks, eight strikeouts. Why did he come out after 84 pitches? We'll talk. I'm not going to get this in. Stevenson <laughs> coughs up the lead after two batters when Paven Smith hits a two-run homer, one for six with runners in scoring position. Kutch, Jack-Jack, uh, Santana, Hayes, Bay, Palacios, and Hedges all have a hit. Swinsky's double, Hayes a triple driving in all three runs. Stevenson hit with the loss in this one. Sunday. The Pirates had to depend on Rowanzi and beating Merrill Kelly. He goes five innings, three hits, three runs, three walks, three strikeouts, back-to-back -back errors in the sixth inning, allowing the D-backs to go ahead for good. Bullpen letting us down. A lot of runs in this one. Stevenson only got one out in his two runs, going from a 167 Friday to a 450 after the weekend. Moretta gets tagged with the loss, and the Diamondbacks take the game 8-3 to three and the series 2-1. to one. You made some cuts. Yeah, but nobody <laughs> listening knows that. Uh, yeah, but I had to throw it in. <laughs> so I'll start with 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 Robert Stevenson here. Good good job though. Thanks. Job. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, well done. I think that's how you do it. I think that's how you get in under the clock, is you gotta take a couple things out. Sure. Um, I think I'll start with Stevenson, but let's just talk. We have Stevenson. We have a Mitch Keller talk conversation to have. We have a position player conversation to have. Don't let me forget any of this stuff. But Friday's show, we said, hey, Robert Stevenson is having a sneaky good year right now. He's actually looking really good. We had a couple compliments for him and we moved on. And in my notes here, I have, I take back everything I said. <laughs> 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 two rough outings in this one really is all it is he only gets one out on sunday uh he goes from a 167 friday morning to a 450 era after the weekend this is the kind of thing that happens to relief pitchers if you get to if you get beat up just a little bit uh i think it was two runs each game right i believe so yeah so really not like that could happen over the course of a year you know what i mean like that's not and really, Saturday was like a base hit and a home run. And then all of a sudden, it's the, that, that was it. That was right. the final. And so, I don't know. Like, the verdict's still out on Stevenson. I'm overreacting on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's um, it's a little yeah. lighthearted. It's, it's a bummer for right. him. He's been looking really good. And he has two bad outings in one weekend to just balloon that ERA. If he continues to pitch well, it comes back down. Yeah. Just takes longer to come back down than it takes to inflate. Especially when you only record one out in one of the in the you know one of them, right? For a relief pitcher early in the season, and I, I don't know. You call it? Is this still early in the season? We're what one? What are we? A quarter of the way through? Is that how this works? Forty games is Ish. a quarter of the way through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, I guess it's still kind of early. You know, we're we're nearing the end of May. If you break it down into six months, we're in the still in the first third. So anyway, that that's and he he was hurt for a while. So for him, yes, this is very much early. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't thinking of that. So 
I don't know. That's all I really have there. Uh, to me, it's it's more so, you know what? I'm going to get into it right now because I'm always going to get into it. I'm always going to complain about it. It's something that's completely <laughs> backwards. I don't like it. And when I look at this, like, okay, so I'm, go- I'm moving into Saturday. This is going to be the thing I'm going to go to. I'm moving into Saturday. Well, I'll start with Friday. Three relief pitchers Friday. Mouskowitz, Frias, and Herrera. I don't know how you say that name. Uh, so I'm going with Mouskowitz. If you guys don't know who Fivel Mouskowitz is, then you're not on my level, okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Love it. And so there's four relief pitchers the next night. None of them pitched on Friday. And then two relief pitchers. Are they are they two new relief pitchers? Ginkle and McGuff. Did not pitch at all until Sunday. Right? Mm -hmm. But Herrera, who throws an inning, is not a pitcher. What is he, a catcher? Yeah, a backup catcher. So you're beating a team 13 to 3. You've tagged their pitchers. you've earned the ability to have them burn through their bullpen. And yet here we are in the eighth inning, not the ninth inning even, the eighth inning, allowing them to save one, two, three, four, five, six guys who end up throwing against us for the first time that we see them. That should be the advantage of the team who's winning that game. 100%. 100%. I completely agree. That's the kind of thing that bugs me in this in this scenario is I mean what what advantage do you, I mean other than winning the game, right? But why are we giving right. this team that's getting beat up an advantage in the next two games? Right. I just I, I, I can't get past this and every time <clears throat> it happens I'm going to be mad about it. Yeah, and I I'm right with you on on the topic, you know, it just, <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I don't. If anybody I, earned that, it was us. We yes, should be absolutely. able to save our bullpen. Absolutely. Who threw for the Pirates? Underwood, who gave up two runs in that game. But uh, okay, I don't think it was really out of. So Ramirez and Holderman. So we threw Holderman in this game. Mm-hmm. Does that? I mean, I don't know that. I don't know that it really makes a big difference for. For our for our pitching, if we would have gotten to rest somebody, you know what I'm saying. It's not right. like it was Stevenson, or it's not like you know what I'm saying. It's not like it was any kind of disadvantage that we threw somebody that ended up throwing again, right? You know, it's not a big right. deal. Holderman right. technically threw that ninth inning and he didn't pitch again, so that's fine. And we really right. didn't need him to pitch again. Maybe we would have if we would have gotten an opportunity to see one of their relief pitchers. And maybe, you know, figured something out against him. I mean, it's a short series. I get it. Like, it's just a three-game series, and it's not like this is a guy for the Cardinals who we've pl- played before. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But And I don't want to make too much of something that's, you know, maybe not a big deal. But sometimes you see a guy, and you see him again, and you got a little bit of an advantage. I'm a little bit more comfortable in the box. Yeah. That just it it just ticks me off, man. Uh, yeah, and rightfully so. Like I'm with you. All right. So ta- first off, I, I guess I should go to something positive after that. Pirates beat up Zach Allen, man. Yeah. Yeah. So Eduardo been... Rodriguez on Wednesday and Zach Allen on Friday, and you kind of felt like this thing was turning around. Yeah, that's you face tough guys and you, and you and you get to them then what 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 do we what do we, what do we change we didn't change the lineup <laughs> ah segue that was all you were going to say and you cuz i'm going to take that segue you know what i'm saying i'm yeah, going to i'm going to sure. run with that yeah. so you missed your opportunity yeah. if you had something else to say i didn't i didn't saturday's lineup was the same lineup as friday's Exactly. All the way down. Mm-hmm. 
That is the first. I got to get this right here because I need you to understand. Not back to back. That is the first lineup that they've repeated in 2023. Not from the day before. I literally mean from any other day this season. <laughs> <laughs> they've never had a lineup go out there twice. Now, we just talked about this. Was it just Friday? I think so. So, we looked this, I looked this up at length this offseason. And we mm -hmm. talked about Shelton running different lineups out there and how it's not just a Derek Shelton thing, that this is normal. And I'm not sure I was prepared for it to be 40 games in and then not repeating one single lineup. I will say, though, there's been a lot of pieces that have not moved much. We have yeah. had more consistent hitters in this lineup in the same place, but that bottom end has been changing a lot. And that's, that's what you expect. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that it hasn't been all the same for multiple games. I mean, I understand that there's been some movement too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But some injuries. Yeah, there's injuries. There's guys in and out. You know, you've got some guys like Heineman who was here for a minute. He's not here now. And Andrew Har is now gone. He was in the lineup a little bit. Maggie. Smith and Jigba, Maggi. So like, obviously O'Neill Cruz. So like, there's guys who have kind of been like, oh yeah, but now this guy's here and not that guy. And Matthias. You know what I'm saying? He had his share of lineups that he was in. And um, so there's definitely like a lot of moving pieces, just like any other team. Uh, I haven't looked across the league to see how many other teams are moving around, you know what I mean? And how much they are. And it, it sure looks like the pirates might be uh, another outlier in this, but I would say for the most part, because that, because I, I was very surprised to see that because I have felt like there's been a pretty solidified lineup as far as what's been going out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really do think that. Like I said, just some some changes near the bottom of the order have been happening a lot. But you're seeing a lot of Reynolds at two, Cutch at three or one, Santana at four, and then, you know what I mean, a few moving pieces around there. Uh, interestingly, in these two games... Uh, it was not that way. It was Sawinski hitting three. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so they're, they're going to keep messing with this, and they should when we're not hitting well. Something's yeah. got to change and click, and they, and I, I kudos to Shelton when he felt like this lineup clicked the night before. Let's send him out there again and see what they could do with it. But, um, you know, obviously it didn't work. Right. Uh Every every day's different. Every day's different in baseball. So, but that, I thought that was interesting that this was the first one. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, like you have a good offensive day, hitting's contagious. So I'm not really going to get too into the runners in scoring position. We know where it was at. It was good in the game that we scored a lot of runs, and it was bad in the games that we scored three runs. So I think that's pretty self explanatory. Yeah, got to get the four. <laughs> got to get the four. It it wouldn't have worked in the in Sunday's game, but you know we would still be playing, I guess, if you got the four. Um, so let's talk Keller, because you get to Zach Gallon, you want to get the Keller game, and I've been making it a point to kind of say that sort of thing, like you got to get the Keller game anyway, right. even if he doesn't win it, you got to get that game. And he was in place. He was in position to win this thing. Mm -hmm. And Stevenson, you know, we, we talked about Stevenson. But I think you got some thoughts on the on Keller and the decision to take him out. He was only at 84 pitches. Yeah, I mean, he, he's at 84 pitches. He's been throwing a lot of pitches lately. Um, you know, we've been using him as our workhorse. So I, I get the decision to take him out to a point. You know, Stevenson's been getting the job done. So there was no reason for Shelton to be like, eh, I'm hesitant to do this. Yeah, I mean, you could have went Stevenson, Holderman, and Bednar. Yeah, and it would have been just fine. Stevenson's got to go do his job. 
that's on the player, not on the coach. However, you know, and and, and the the thing before that was that Keller had he had traffic on the bases. He gave up a run in the sixth. So let's wrap him. Like I get it. I get the move. I would have liked to seen Keller go back out, but at the same time, I'm like I I, I understand it. And you just got to expect that the guy who's been getting the job done is going to get the job done. And he just didn't. And that's okay. Once in a while, like, yeah. So you, Keller's sixth gonna... inning was a fly out one out. Perdomo strikes out swinging two outs. So it just kind of felt like, here we go. Right. Mm-hmm. And then hit by pitch, Josh Rojas, Marte singles on a ground ball to key Brian Hayes. Uh, I'm not really, I'm trying to remember this play. And I don't think I remember it. Um, Rojas, it was the double steal. I remember that. I remember the double steal being a big thing. Corbin Carroll, dude. By the way, he's a stud. Yeah, he's good. You know, probably better than even than what I really thought. I don't remember if he, was he any was either of our picks for rookie of the year. I think he might have been my pick for rookie think, of the year. Yeah, I think or was I he yours him too? I think I did picked we, him. Did we both? Is this a both of us picking him for rookie of the year? Shoot, do you remember when we did? No, you don't remember when we did that. Nobody remembers when we did that. <laughs> Why would you remember when we did that? Right. I have it right here. Player awards, National League Rookie of the Year. Um, we both picked Corbin Carroll. <laughs> Uh, well, we shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Sorry. I think we we did this to ourselves. Anyway. Um, so Corbin Carroll's uh, singles, he gives up the run, and then Christian Walker grounds out um, to Mitch to That's end right. the inning. Yep. yep. Come back, yeah. So... <sighs> Man, I don't know. I mean, just a couple. The hit by pitch. I, I don't really remember that. So here's the story of Saturday for me. We had my daughters. Uh, I you probably don't know what Tavasi is. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. I think they made up the name themselves. I have no. <laughs> <laughs> basically, it's like a singing thing, right? Yeah. Um, and they just do a bunch of songs, and it's like a whole bunch of kids, and they. It's kind of like um, like a school program or like a like a church program, except they're not church songs, but like a school program type thing. I don't know if if that's still a thing. If they do those sort of things, either way, I have no idea. Which basically means like you know they're it's a bunch of like cheesy dumb songs. Um, some that are okay, some that are like I mean not okay. I mean like yeah. Okay is a loose word. Like this, the so, the songs are like, yeah, I get it for this setting, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But then like they change the words a little bit, and <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> it's just the thing. They do motions and the whole. Th- Either way, I'm sitting there. We get in there and we're waiting for this thing to start, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna pull up the game. I'm just gonna kind of watch it while I'm sitting here. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch it while I'm sitting here. And then, like, they get started, and so, you know, you're watching your daughter, and she's just, she eats it up, man. She loves it. Yeah. So, I'm watching her, and then, and then like, there's just a whole program. So, like, she's off the stage. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got to watch when she wasn't up. Yeah. But when she's up there, obviously, you're, I just put the right. phone, I'm, I'm, it's dad mode, you know what I mean? You put the phone down, yeah. and you watch... So I actually missed the Paven Smith home run entirely. <laughs> she was that I think that was her solo song. <laughs> and and it's just like she has a line in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh killed it by the way. Let's go. Um give her one. Give her one. Give her one. We'll give her a small yeah. one. Killed it. Yeah. Good job, Keel. Yeah. So anyway. Um <laughs> it's funny because like mom's there. And yeah. we all know mom's a big Buckos fan. <laughs> She keeps going. She's probably leaning over. She's leaning over going, hey, what's going on? I was like, we're still <laughs> winning. And then all of a sudden, her song's over or whatever, and I pick up my phone, and I was like, ah, we're losing. She's like, what happened? I was like, I don't know. 
<laughs> and like Fubo on an Android, I don't know how it is on iPhone, but like I can't get out of the app to look it up and have it like if I'm watching a YouTube video and I mm-hmm. go out of the YouTube video, it goes in this little screen and I can do whatever I want and the video is playing. Fubo does not do that. It, you close out of it and like, oh, it didn't give me the little screen. So you have to look right. up how they scored it. When you bring up Fubo again, you're back at the home screen. You got to go pick the game again. And then uh, it starts yeah. at the beginning and you got to tell it to go to live because I'm recording them. So anyway, all of that to say, I missed some plays in this game, but I watched <laughs> most of it. So I didn't yeah. actually go back and watch the whole thing. I just clicked on a couple highlights. So anyway, I missed a, a couple of these. Uh, because of her her deal, her program, if I want to sound like her a boomer. Her. So with that said, that was pretty much that whole thing. Um, about Keller, I love the rabbit trails. Yes. People come back for the rabbit trails, I think. <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> yeah. anyway, um, yeah, for me, I, I wasn't intently watching that inning. So I, I I can't really say, and I'm not listening and you know what I'm saying? Because it's just muted and I'm watching it down here while I'm acting like I'm looking at a program. Yeah. Um, and I actually mean like the, the book, the program, not, yeah, anyway. So I I don't know eighty four pitches I understand he's been he's been throwing a lot but th- there's still a part of me that that wants him going out there for the seventh inning with eighty four even if he's on a short leash man I I want him out there you know yeah. when you come into the seventh inning you've got Gurriel and Pavin Smith and I mean those are the two you know what I mean but then you know if you could just get through that piece and then you just got hold him and. Have Stevenson ready, have Moretta ready to come in at that point and and get him out of a jam. I think yeah. to me, that would have made the most sense. However, I, I like I said, I I just have a hard time uh feeling like that's what lost it when you like exactly like what you said. You're playing 162, man. You're going to need your players to step up and to do well when their name is called. And if they don't, mm-hmm. then that's the story of your season, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where yeah. we're at right now is if that's going to be the story of the season, then that that's it. If, if we end up in the cellar and whatever, then that means that this happens more times than, than not. And at this point, it hasn't. So you let it ride. Yeah, but I agree with you totally. I I just think that, um, I think when you're down to seven, eight, nine, and you've had your bullpen doing well, I I don't mind you trusting them in that in that position, if that inning was a lot for him, or yeah. if there was something that they saw. You know what I mean? If they want to take it easy, I mean you. I I definitely don't mind protecting a guy like like Keller if you already have a one zero lead on the series. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can get yeah. out of that thing and save his arm at the same time, you'd really like that. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm with you. I, I think Keller, I, I would have liked to have seen Keller in the seventh inning, but I also don't hate the decision. I don't blame Shelton for this one. It's just, this one falls on Stevenson. You just, you just got to execute, and he didn't. Yeah, and speaking of he didn't, uh, the bullpen – on Sunday was a little bit of the same thing. Moretta gives up a run. Zestrisny gives up a run. Stevenson, two more. Like we said, only gets one out there. Um, mm-hmm. And Ramirez gives up a run. And, you know, I mean, like, it, it ends up being, you get you get Rowanzi out of there and the, d- did you hear me read that off? Three hits, three runs, three walks, and three strikeouts? That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I like things like that. Anyway, I don't mm-hmm. like the fact that he only went five innings, but he's not sharp right now. He's not. He, you know, and I was watching the condensed. I was playing ball all day, so I watched the condensed game. And who, who, who swung? I forget who it was. He threw a slider, 
Dude, it's just right down the middle. Like it's starting on the outer half and it's sliding over to the inner half. Like it's just, he's just down the middle and you know, he's getting guys swinging and missing. And then was that the Carroll home run? And then Carroll gets up and it's the same the thing. same exact pitch yeah. and he just doesn't miss it. Like, yeah, and it's a three two slider. Can't keep it there. That's it. It's a three two slider, and he has been getting away with those in the middle because of that pitch. But uh, I think he had a feeling that that Carroll kind of knew what was coming there, so he yeah. was sitting slider, and I think that's the only way you're really gonna you're really gonna have a chance on that one. Um, just compared, just according to what the numbers look like, like he's been right. getting, a, you don't keep getting away with that. And I think right. one of the reasons why is when you have a guy sitting on it and saying, I'll foul off a fastball, but give me that slider and I'm, and I'm hacking. Eat. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. man, he, as fast as Carol is, man, that's, that's his seventh home run. And that's what I didn't, that's what I didn't see. Right. Coming. I mean, this guy's the real deal. So it looks. Yeah. But, yeah, he's just not sharp yet. Or right now, the last three, four starts, you know, I thought yeah. it was good. I mean, he still was effective. I mean, three runs, like I said, you would like to see six innings for three runs there, but, you know, you're still in the game at that point. Yeah. Um. I mean, it was a tie game, <laughs> so absolutely still in the game. Right. Saw a little luck from uh, from Key Brian Hayes. A couple days, a um, few extra base hits, a triple, and and two doubles, and um, no hits on Sunday. But you could say that about a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but just seeing a little bit of a different, you know, a l- little bit of a different luck. I feel like not much of not much has changed as far as the hits from what I can see. It looked the same. <laughs> yeah. They're just either falling or they're not. I think that uh I think the triple in right field probably could have been an out. Yeah. One, he goes uh, back and he jumps one. for it. I think he ju- he stopped yeah. too early and jumped. I think if he takes another yeah. step back, it's just a guy not knowing um the dimensions of the PNC. Dimensions. Not used to it and everything, and and so I mean you'll take it. Like I said, this is the type of evening out that happens. You get a triple right. on that ball where, you know, he's had countless hits that he deserved hits on and didn't get them. So, you know, stuff like that. That uh, you know that it's it's just the way that the season goes. You'll get he'll, he'll get more. He'll get less. Yep. Um, but it was good to see a, a few of them fall for him, and and, and important ones getting RBIs in. Yeah, I think I think if you're gonna if they're gonna drop in, that's when you want them to. For sure. You know what else I did Saturday night? What's my that? children, my bride. That's right. Any of you uh, 2010 metalcore heads know my children, my bride. Got to go see them. A little nugget right in the middle of the episode for those of you who, who are still <laughs> listening and paying attention. Go yeah. check out My Children, My Bride. Matt's a good dude. So good. Yeah. Dude, it was a time capsule. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> that room was full of people that I did not know still existed. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so let's look at the standings here. Uh, Pirates, uh, we're kind of keeping in step with the Brewers there for a minute. Um, but Brewers won today, so back to one game under. Mm-hmm. Two games over 500. And by the way, St. Louis no longer in last place. Eight and two in their last 10 for the second straight. Well, I guess it's not weak. Like we just talked about this Friday, but um, they keep on that pace. And they're now in third place in the division, right behind us, passing the Cubs and the Reds, who have lost two and four in a row. Reds at a negative 43 run differential. I tell you what, though, just a little thing in here. Their City Connect jerseys, the new best in baseball. You're going straight to best? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those those are nasty. They're super, super cool. Yeah. You know what's not super cool? 
getting the opportunity to wear the awesome City Connect jerseys and then getting thrown out of the game for some stupid reason. <laughs> He's the worst manager in the game. So bad. So bad. I think he just doesn't want to be there. And they won't fire him. He just keeps getting thrown. He's like, he had fuzz on his hand? Throw him out. And then when they didn't throw him out, he got thrown out. Like... He's like, somebody's He's getting awful. thrown out of this game. <laughs> I would love to hear how that went, because I would love it if he said, <laughs> somebody's getting thrown out of this game. And they went, and they're like, boom. You, sir, can be the one. <laughs> He's just not good. I but. can't stand watching him manage. I mean, how? Never mind. Anyway. We're not going to talk about the Reds. Gosh, Stinks. Uh, are the Cardinals pitching yet? I, I, is that how they're doing this? I mean, I know they're scoring a ton of <laughs> runs. Yeah, they're just scoring a ton of runs. Here they come, guys. Here they come. They're still four games behind us. So, and we are still in a wild card spot. So, if the season ended today, guys, despite how we've been playing, we are in the postseason. Yeah. Is May too early to be watching the standings? A hundred percent. But we're going to watch them as long as we're in them. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. And we're, we've said that before, and we're going to keep saying it. When we're out of it, mm -hmm. we're going to stop looking at it. We're going to stop bringing it up. All right, let's preview a little bit of what's coming to town. You don't have anything else on this? You don't have anything else about how anybody's doing or... um, You know what I mean? Do you have anything that, that I missed? Is there something I didn't bring up? They threw a catcher against us, and they shouldn't have. <laughs> no, I think we covered it all. All right. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't skipping. I felt like I was moving kind of quickly here. Well, guys, the Texas Rangers are coming to town. I will be there Wednesday, as I said. So if you guys are going to be at the game Wednesday and skipping school and skipping work and all that stuff, uh, let me know. Let me know. Texas is in first place in the AL West. They are 29 and 17, 7 and 3 in their last 10 games. Just coming off a series win against the Rockies where they scored 7, 11 and 13 runs at home. And Sunday was Bluebell Ice Cream Day at the ballpark, so I'm jealous of that. <laughs> Bluebell Ice Cream is awesome. I never really had it. You never really had it. So, um uh, it's uh, flashback time. Flashback. <laughs> <laughs> when me and Jake, a, a long time ago, um, well, it's been about 13 years ago, we were playing in a band and we were on tour and we were going through Bryan, Texas. And we were in town a little bit early. We stopped over. The venue wasn't open yet. Went down the road to this ice cream shop. I just found this video the other day, so I don't remember what it was called, but it was this ice cream <laughs> shop in Bryan, Texas. And we go in, <laughs> this, this is explicit a little bit, guys, not really, but it's like, you know, we got a little bit of, you know, we got a little bit of like Come on. humor here. So we all go up, we get ice cream. I had cinnamon ice cream. It was awesome. But they used Bluebell ice cream. So it was great. Jake, how much ice cream did you have? <laughs> I had none. I had none, none, none ice cream. They kicked us out of the place because they were closing. And we're like, uh, uh, we still have a guy here. And they're like, what? And they're like, he's in the bathroom? <laughs> so Jake comes out of the bathroom. Had a big job. Yeah. <laughs> he comes out of the bathroom and gets no ice cream because they're like, we're closed, dude. You can't get any. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? Like, like 501. <laughs> anyway. Um, they've scored three shy of 300 runs this season already to compare. We've barely scored 200. We've scored three more than 200. Um, our run differential, by the way, is once is 17 plus 17 and theirs is plus 108. And that is not a typo. <laughs> they've given up, uh, three more runs than we have though. Okay. But they've just scored 297 of them. Yeah. Is that the most? 
Because that's a lot of runs. Tampa Bay <laughs> scored 290. Yeah. Nobody's even close to that. Nobody else is even... Oh, no, the Dodgers are at 260. So those are the only three over 240. Yeah. Oh, no, 258 for Boston as well. Whoa, 258 for Boston. So... In Boston. 297, though. That's a lot. That's a lot of runs. <laughs> that, uh, however you say Adolis, is that right? Did I nail it the first time? Adolis Garcia has 14 home runs. And Josh Young, a guy that I said can compete for Rookie of the Year. It's not who wasn't my pick. Gunnar Henderson was my pick, but I said I could very easily see Josh Young taking it. And he has nine home runs. Mm-hmm. They can hit. Yeah. Not to mention they can pitch. <laughs> oh, wait. They can field, too. <laughs> I was looking up their little player stats on the MLB app, and I think they were they had, like, three guys tied for the team lead in errors at three apiece. Like, that's good, man. That's, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Pitching matchups for the week uh, will be Ortiz versus Dane Dunning. He's just 4-0 with a 169 so far. No big deal. Uh, Tuesday's Rich Hill versus Nathan Eovaldi, who's just 5-2 and two with a 283. And on track record. And what? A, a long track record. Like he's been oh, good for yeah, a long yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then Wednesday, the, the day game... Oviedo versus Martin Perez, who's five and one with a four oh one right now. I I mean I like our chances Wednesday. I like our left handed mm -hmm. lineup. I think it kind of gets things clicking. Yeah. Um but you gotta you you know, Ortiz, Rich Hill, you gotta get one of those games if you want to take a series. Um just get them all three. Why not? Why not knock them off and let Houston just take over first place in Texas and Texas say, man, remember that trip to Pittsburgh? That sucked. <laughs> Let's let them say that. Yeah. Uh, realistically, uh, we're at home, so you want to take the series. I mean, right. that's what it is, right? This is baseball. You want? I don't care what place they're in. If you're at home, you want to take the series. Yeah, if we're gonna, if we're a competitive team, we're gonna take a series at home against a good team, and, and we haven't done that. We can hope for that. Yeah, and we haven't done that. We had a very good opportunity against the Diamondbacks. I really think we wasted an opportunity this week. Yeah, it's frustrating. It is. It is. 108 run differential. How do you even get there? Crazy. By, by pitching and fielding as well as hitting. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Is that the best run differential? <laughs> Tampa, 124. Because <laughs> they've been pitching so well, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they they actually have guys on their team that can like toss a ball up in the air and then throw it. It's impressive. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> freaking <die. laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm weak. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, here we are at a place <laughs> of the show where we're playing sound clips and talking about stories. So I think it's a good time to end it. Yeah. Um, I like this episode. I'm not going to lie. No, I, 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 had a, dude, I had a ton of fun this episode, man. Yeah, this is a good time. And I'm actually really pleased that your internet held up long enough to do, <laughs> to do this <laughs> at mom's house. So that's definitely yeah. a good thing. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, Arizona's a good team. Yes. They, they really are. You know what I'm saying? That they're, they're a good team, and I think we should have taken that, but at the same time, you got beat by a good team. You got to the top pitcher in the NL. If anything, you just bumped Keller just a little bit closer to a Cy Young in comparison and stuff. Um, where is Keller's ERA now? Because we tagged him pretty good. 
we are I mean, at you, you got you gotta get past Spencer Strider for the Cy Young. Two forty four and you knocked uh you knocked Gallon all the way to two ninety five, so nice piece there. As if the ERA is the only thing that matters, but Right. I mean, you got Spencer Strider down there striking out fifteen per nine. I get that, but Zach Gallon has been ahead of him. So you got to knock the guys off that are ahead of you. So I get your Spencer Strider comment. I hear you I'm over just there. Saying. But Spencer Strider was not number one coming into this weekend. That's just surprising to me. I mean, Zach Gallon's been unreal. He's been, yeah, yeah no, for sure. Uh, he also walked four guys in that game. So he was a little bit off, too. Yeah. I think he had walked, what, eight all year? Remember when we said we were going to stop this thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. eight all year, walked four in this game. It's wild. All right, guys, seriously, though, we're going to wrap this thing up. I know yeah. that uh, <laughs> we're going to come with some, some, uh, some better stuff soon. Not better stuff, you know what I mean, like, I like to do my deep dives. Uh, this was just not a weekend to do a deep dive. I, had, mm -hmm. I you know, I had visitors here all weekend, so uh, we didn't have any of those uh, longer uh, deep dive things for a Monday episode like we usually do. But I know that you guys just enjoy the 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 banter and the conversation. Um, what I want to encourage you to do is to join in. We want to hear from you. Um, we've been getting some comments lately on YouTube. Let's keep that up and. Uh, let's just keep talking Pirates baseball, and let's hope that when we talk to you guys Friday, uh, we have a series win to talk about. Yeah. Dynamite edition. <laughs> Dynamite drop These in broadcasting money. Broadcasting schools are really paying off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you have a great week, and we will talk mm -hmm. to you again on Friday. Let's go, Bucks. Let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, cannonball coming, and let's go, Bucks! <laughs>